Hi, welcome to Remember Me, episode 2. This is called Macrowave. Uh, it starts off in the same way as all the others, with Nilin sitting in some weird cyber space, um, virtual, I don't know what it is. Uh, and she has a little talking to herself and explains the story, basically. It's exposition. Eh, you know, it kind of works. I also saw that Borderlands 2 Tiny Tina's Dungeon Crawl, or whatever it's called, is out, so I need to get on that quick smart. But I've got Swapper Remember Me to play. I can't seem to stop playing Heroes of Might and Magic. Uh, Duel of Champions. <laughs> I picked that up a couple of days ago. And it's a free trading card game. But anyway, we start off and we are heading... I forget exactly where we're heading. I don't know. This, as we've explained, or as I've explained, this game is basically on rails. Um, you're given an objective, but there's not actually... I mean, short of dying, there's no way you can fail. It's it's just very pretty corridors with the occasional dead-end side room off the side with a pickup in No one chooses which side of the firewall to grow up on. It's not their selfishness that I condemn, sister. You know, it's, um, it's nice. I think the thing that annoys me about games like this, and I think it's a Capcom thing, honestly, the, uh, the style of these Japanese epics has remained unchanged, really, since well, even the early DMCs, where you'd have this kind of gorgeous-looking world that's very well crafted, but just doesn't feel authentic. Um, and <laughs> calling anywhere in the future Neo something, like Neo Paris, Neo London, Neo New York, just it doesn't make sense. They wouldn't rename a city Neo something. And um, what was the one in Russia? St. Petersburg was renamed. Um, no, it wasn't renamed. It is the renaming of... I want to say Vladivostok, but I think I'm wrong. Um, they renamed Burma, Myanmar, not Neo Burma. Do you see what I mean? It's not people don't rename somewhere new something. Chances are they're trying to rebrand it and forget. But I digress. Here's our first fight. Or is that a second? I've been kind of ranting and not looking at the screen. Uh, what's the basic deal here? You can jump over these guys. Okay. Uh, so when you see the little question mark above their head, that's the time to dodge. Uh, you can also overload them like that if you do enough strong hits. A little prompt will turn up for the next couple of hits. And you can insta-kill them like this. Um, which gives you a bunch of focus back. Although, have we even discovered focus yet? I don't think we have. No, we haven't got any S presents. E presents. X presents. Presents of some kind. The boom! There we go. Ah, uh, but these guys get out pretty quickly. And new presents available. Yay! We can unlock another healing one. Or an attack one. So I think, yeah, I switched out this one for attack, maybe. Yeah? Yeah, with a bit of healing in the middle. There we go. Not the most exciting present or combo, but it'll do at this point. We've only got two things to choose from. Anyway, there's not much to do around here. There is a secret up there, which I think I failed to get. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a bit more running around here with nothing to see. Should have sped this up, really. I will start speeding these up. Oh, that's right, the pickup's here. So you shimmy across this pipe here. It just talks at you. Uh, and then you drop down there and there's the sap patch. So that's the fifth sap patch I've found here. And I think it's actually the sixth or seventh in the game. But again, the collectibles will cover all that. Collectibles videos. And I'll link that in the description. And then up here and around there. And keep jumping over here. And we're going to line up for another fight. You may have seen the enforcers just down there in the yard. That's a funny little weird dead end that doesn't make any kind of sense whatsoever. Uh, you climb up here instead. There we go. And then over here. Quite why we couldn't have dropped down there from before, I don't know, but that's what I mean about it being basically a very pretty corridor. You don't get to deviate much from the path. And the cutscenes are a little bit tedious. I also die pretty convincingly here, I think, but you'll, I want to show you this bit. New S. Presson, Sense and Fury. So Sense and Fury basically turns you into Batman Arkham Asylum. You'll see here, so every hit is guaranteed to hit. You'll cross the battlefield as far as you need to go to get there, but you will still... Um, you can still get hit. You can see in a second we get hit there. And again by that guy. No, different one. There instead. And now I've got a 57 second cooldown, and you'll see that there's a way of managing that in a second. But there we go, dead. So I'll replay this. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, basically, if you die, what will happen is that focus bar, the focus gauge, the little white thing that's filling up, 
there, now it's full. That allows you to activate any of your Sensen Furies. Or your Sen Express and Sensen? I don't know. Sensen. Sure. Um, and there we go. Just getting the combo up and failed to connect there for some reason. Anyway, that guy's going in. Uh, you can see the cooldown happening up there. So at the moment I've only got regular attacks that I'm doing. So I'm just trying to get them to the point where they're overloaded. There we go, so that I can refresh that. So when the, the timing sorts itself out, I'll have some left. But actually, they're about to introduce us to cooldown presents. The bomb, the new class of present is available. Uh, so the cooldown present, much like the attack and the healing present, depending on where you put it, um, will remove time from the cooldowns of all your S presents. X-Presence. S I know. There we go, yeah, reduce s press and cooldowns on hit. So, in fact, what I ended up going with by the end of the game was Utility, where I had one cooldown, one healing, and one high damage combo, and I just alternate between them depending on what the situation demanded. Um, and then one kind of d did a bit of everything. Um, there we go, but the Sensen Fury has now regenerated, so I can just chain this up. I don't really quite get all of the attacks off, but you can see also one round from that pretty much uh, does a reload of the Fury. There's another, it's reloaded now just in time with the cooldown, so that's nice. Uh, I think this gets a bit messy because a guy attacks me and the jump fails, which is why we don't fight guys in the corner. There we go. So, I mean, from here on in, it's, there's not much to see. I think I can do a bit of healing and... Uh, a bit of cooling down. Uh, but they're basically all dead now, so uh, as soon as this is cooled down, I've healed a bit. There we go. No. Uh, yay! We can use the Fury, which is utterly pointless because that one guy was overloaded, which left only one guy left. But uh, So if any of you have started playing Borderlands, let me know. I think I'll probably get to that tonight, although I'm still not entirely sure. we got another spinny... not another, that's the first of the spinny things to climb across. There's a little guy running away there. Now, uh, what else is in here? Nothing? No, medic bay thing. There we go, and then some shimmying, and even the climbing just feels a bit... Go here, do this, push that button. It doesn't feel like it's fun. That's the problem I have with this game. All of it is... All of it's perfectly competent, but there's nothing imaginative in there. Uh, anyway, I've got electrocuted there. Now, if you head over here to the right, and again, I will link the pickups uh, for all the levels in here. If you head over there to the right, there is a Nessus, one of those uh, text log, or, yeah, text log things. Um, and then when you drop down here, we are into like a shopping mall of some kind, I think. And we're going to get a lovely cutscene as we walk through here. Well, I like the little bits of Banksy art, or Banksy style art, I don't imagine they've commissioned him to do this, that are kicking around. It, it is, it's... Uh, the framework of this game is nice, it's well done, it's, you know, the, the world, the, the, the concept. Even the enemies are quite fun um, and quite well thought through in terms of the fact that the rich buy these rich memories and the poor are left with no nice memories and they're all bad and they just live in this weird world of pain. I don't understand why they appear to have no nice memories left though. It's it confuses me why you can take a memory. Oh, we'll come back. This bit's the worst bit of voice acting ever. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> Not that you really heard it, but now we get to steal this dude's memory. His name's Bad Request. Um, I don't quite know why. He's apparently your biggest fan. And he thinks he's a gangster rapper. There we go. Boom! Um, so, what happens here is we've got Remembranes, and they're the virtual project projections of a digitized memory displayed in real time through augmented reality. It's not really, well, I suppose it is augmented reality, but it's just, um, well, you'll see. Here we go! Here we go! Which sounds a bit like Mario, here we go! And then he just walks slowly down the corridor. Anyway, you can also sync with them when they're fiddling with consoles. You target with your, um, left bumper there, and then taply quick. Taply quick? Quickly tap B. And you only synchronize there, then you can run over, there'll be a prompt to interact. Half the time, the other half, there isn't a prompt to interact, it's kind of random. 
and doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but then through here, see? Yay. And then there's a couple of guys to fight. See that ladder I just passed on the left? Maybe you didn't see it at the end. Um, I always miss this. I've played through this level four or five times now. And every time I come to this bit, I spend a good minute and a half looking for the way out of this corridor. And it's a ladder. Anyway, there's a dude overloaded there, so I want to get him. Sploosh! And that should give me enough to use Sensen, which I think I then... Oh, yeah, I do use it. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have really, but I should have just kept on this guy with some healing. Because now I am in serious trouble. Anyway, there's some running around here. There's that ladder, and I cut that for you. Because uh, I'm nice like that. And then up here, there is another remembrane to use, and you'll see here, there's um, another chance to synchronize. There. And then you interact. You see, that one I didn't have to interact with. Oh, yeah, no, I did there. You'll see more where there's no interaction. And it's not in. Well, I bet we'll watch this back, actually, and it'll become immediately apparent where the interaction should happen and shouldn't. And I'll just. Anyway. <laughs> so enough whining, let's get on with the good points about this game. It is, it's, um, I like the way they've got a female lead and it's not a big deal that it's a female lead, it just is. Um, that's kind of cool. Oh, there is a, uh, you can see it over there in that yellow box. Another sap patch and then there's this guy here, a drone, but um, we're going to find out here how bad request knows where the drones are, so activate this remembering. I think there might be something on that chest, on that, um, bench too, I forget. Anyway, climbing over here, uh, dodging that lookout area. Lookout area? Uh, detection zone? There we go. And then up here, and that's the way we want to go. But um, down here, just to the other side, I cut this because I spent ages looking for it. Like an idiot, instead of just dropping off. There's another sap patch. Uh, there's the remembrane, which shows bad request jumping across there. Boom! And then we fall through. And then there's another little cutscene, uh, of which there are many. And trust me, lots of playthroughs will be showing all these cutscenes. And if you really like cutscenes, maybe you will get something out of this. But they're just not very good in this. So I think I'm doing you a favour by not showing you stuff. It doesn't particularly extend the story. It doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Like, this guy just keeps chirping up and going, I hope it's going okay with bad request. And it's like, yeah, it's still going okay. You don't have to make me walk slowly for 15 seconds just to tell me that. There's a Nessist on that table there that I failed to notice, and then it's out here. And I'm jumping up here. As you saw there, I jumped back and forth a couple of times. The jumping is a bit fiddly. I was pushing up, but it didn't respond. Um, and then this thing turns up and drops out some guys for me to fight. So then it's a question of building up. There we go, the Fury. The Fury. Uh, and then doing this combo. Now you can use either button to keep the combo going, um, but it appears that kicks will do multiple hits, both to the guy in front of you and the people around you. So I tend to do, well, not now, but I tended to start doing kicks later on. Uh, but you see, once you got the Sense and Fury going, you can actually rip through these guys pretty quickly. Uh, and there is another Presson available to unlock. Uh, there. Or did I just reconfigure my combos? I think I just reconfigured my combos. Uh, some healing there. Edge chirps up again, and it's over this way for no particular reason. We're basically trying to break into here to steal some codes. There's another remembering. Uh, there. And what happens if you walk in there is that you die. Once again. So instead, let's carefully follow bad request. And there's no real penalty for dying in this either, which is intriguing. Um, I mean, it would suck if there were, I guess. But the checkpoints are pretty generous too, like you rarely have to go back more than a room or two. Uh, there is a pickup there, and the I've cut ahead because there was a lot of running around looking for that. And you can't get it till you go through here. So activate that remembering, uh, activate that door, then in here... Uh, there's that remembering there which allows you to hack that terminal. Activating that terminal shuts this shutter so that you're now able to run past that bot outside. But in the meantime, there's the remembering. Uh, down the stairs here to the right of that panel is the sat patch that was in the little visible thing. At the back here, I didn't actually make it that far as a nessist. I didn't realise you could go through there. Uh, there we go. And then jump across here. Pew! There he is behind there. Uh, and then across there. There we go. 
So we followed bad request directions and now it's just a question of climbing up some stuff and having a bit of a fight here. Uh, climbing up some stuff to steal the memory of some chick to get the codes to some door. I'm sure if I paid more attention to the story it would make more sense, but honestly, the cutscenes started to drag on to the point where I just sort of left to make coffee um, whenever they came up. And quite often I would come back and they still wouldn't be finished five or six minutes later. Which is annoying. And you can't skip them even on a second playthrough. Which makes going back for the collectibles kind of annoying. But I said I would focus on the good. So what's the good? The good is the combat system is quite fun. It takes a while to open up and you don't really get into it fully until probably episode five or six. Some of the Espressons, the special abilities that you can use, are very situational. I ended up hardly using them. And the cooldowns on them are quite vicious, but again, if you set up that five combo hit to be all cooldowns with a couple of chains, which we'll explore later, they basically multiply the effect of the previous press. Um, you can cooldown anything in pretty much one round of hits, which is nice. Um, and as you start to get more focus boost by picking up, uh, as you start to get more focus gauge by picking up focus boosts, you can start to be carrying a lot of focus into each battle, which means you can fire off a couple of things pretty early on and really even the odds. Um, you'll see in some of the later playthroughs, some of the fights get quite tricky and actually it becomes interesting because the challenge is then about finding a set of presents that work for the particular boss. Anyway, up here there is a Nessist there on the right that I think I miss. You can pass through that arch and we'll get that in the next playthrough and then it's dropping down here. Don't need any health. Processing, please wait. And here we are, we're on the roof. Another bit of a cutscene against uh, Johnny Vegas. So he is trying to stop us getting there. Now, John, not Johnny Vegas, Johnny Christmas, Christmas Kid, I don't know, Kid Christmas, whatever his name is. Um, so he is a memory hunter and he seems to run his own televised show for no particular reason. He's very popular with people, except he's not really. Uh, he's kind of a douche. Um, and there's a really protracted, annoying cutscene where it basically hits every stereotype you can imagine and doesn't make a lot of sense. So he starts off by going, Nilin, you always pick the wrong side. And um, then uh, she goes, do I know you? And then later on goes, oh, you always talk too much. Um, as if she suddenly remembered him, I don't know why. Anyway, he's got this charge attack. Uh, so when he charges, he gets stunned afterwards. You can get a couple of hits in like that and slowly build up that uh, fury. There we go. Um, once you've hit him a few times he will then do uh, an attack which you have to dodge. Time will slow down a little bit so you get out of the way. But I got my fury up and took his health bar down the first chunk. It's broken into three and it checkpoints okay. after each one I think. I actually didn't do too badly on this one. Yeah, the, it's the cutscenes have all the pieces in the right place, but they're just done too formulaically. There's no time to meet the spammer. It's like, okay, great. Uh, what is the spammer? The spammer's a gun which appears to shoot memories. It's not entirely clear. Um, but like the, I forget what they're called, drifters, dweeders, dreamers, dwebbers, whatever those uh, guys that pull power from the leapers are called. I'm not called drifters. Um, you see here, you can get a couple of hits on him. It's going to be quick though. Uh, but now another attack will come in that you've got to dodge. And then if you get... There he goes. He's, uh, he's gone away again. Now I can get another attack on there. And now, hopefully, we'll get his health down. You can see the kicks there are doing two hits. Um, which is good for the combo attack because each hit does more damage than the previous one. So if you're getting two hits in a single button press, you're going to be pouring out the damage. I think I died in this next one a couple of times, but I've cut it out, so we will drop back here, which may explain why I have no focus boost. Or no focus at the beginning of that fight. So uh, now he also drops mines as well as firing a spammer, but you can basically run around until he gets bored of doing the spammer. Um, you can hit him a few times, um, which once you've hit him a few times, he'll start to be more prone to charging as well. Now the thing about the mines is... Um, there we go, there's only one there. They'll explode and knock you down. Um, there's not much happening here, I just lose a bit of health until I get this back here. 
And then we can go to town on him once or twice. Oh, I lost the combo there. That was unfortunate. You see there again the 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, but there's a mine. When you run into that, that'll explode. You just need to dodge out of the way. So it's not too bad. But when there's lots of them around, it can become a problem. So you really want to detonate them the moment they appear. And it's not too bad. Again, if he's shooting at you with the spammer, um, you can just dodge out of the way. And then another Fury, which will break through his attack. There we go, so he won't be able to shield it. And that should get his health down low enough to bring up the Terminate Quick Time event there. There we go. So now I just run in, close in, and it's a question of... There we go, pushing the buttons. And my reaction times are very slow. But this is all the first blind playthrough stuff. Uh, the only thing I've cut out is the fails. Now there's another really long cutscene that I've cut because ultimately he just goes, oh, and it's just a bit cack. Um, so I've just cut it to where she curb stomps him there. Bloosh! So I cut Edge talking too, but we got the spammer, which was nice. So now the spammer lets us shoot stuff in the sky, like that. And it will also force guys who charge to charge you, which is another neat trick. So you can stand by a door, pop them with the spammer, and they'll dive away. But it's on a cooldown. Um, so you shoot it, and this bar uh, winds down. But it comes back with time. But basically what it means is, despite it being called the spammer, you can't actually just spam it. Because it's time critical. Anyway, that's Nilin and episode 2, Macrowave. Uh, I will see you in the next video. There on the left, episode 1, which was called what, Low, to Low Life, Low Tech. Episode 4, I forget the name, but I'll put it in the description. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, it's not. It's going to be 3. This was episode 2. Episode 1 is on the left. Episode 3 is on the right. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye.